So as we're talking about the peripheral chemoreceptors, there is the one, the carotid body, and then the aortic chemoreceptors. Of these two, the carotid body is the most important chemoreceptor. Now, the chemoreceptors, the peripheral chemoreceptors, responds to three stimulus. The response to the pH, the response to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and the response to the partial pressure of oxygen. Okay. Another thing I want to talk about is which chemoreceptor deals with which nerve. Now, the carotid body deals with the glossopharyngeal nerve, and the aortic chemoreceptor deals with the vagus. Okay. They, they, do, they do the same thing with two different nerves. Um, you know, they, if they get stimulated, uh, they will stimulate the glossopharyngeal or the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic pathway is going to be stimulated. Anyways, moving on to the peripheral receptors, we know that uh, the central receptors are the main drive for ventilation, but peripheral receptors also has uh, receptors for pH and carbon dioxide, so they also play a very small role in alveolar ventilation. very small role in alve alveolar ventilation. And we know that oxygen is not present in the central receptors. Oxygen receptors are only in the peripheral receptors, okay? And does these receptors, does the receptors for oxygen play any role in alveolar ventilation? No, they usually do not play any role in the day-to-day -day alveolar ventilation. These receptors only take part when the partial pressure of oxygen dramatically decreases more than 50 to 60 millimeter mercury. Remember that uh, graph that we talked about um, where, you know, this was 50 and this was 100 and this was 150 and the graph was kind of linear until like so for oxygen. It's only when the oxygen level drops below 50 that's our around 50 to 60 range, that's when the peripheral receptor gets uh, stimulated. So extreme hypoxia is going to stimulate our oxygen receptors. But other than that, the central receptors are the main regulator for alveolar ventilation. Now the central receptors, okay, now I'm switching back to the central receptors a little bit. The central receptors are sensitive to carbon dioxide increase. So if your carbon dioxide is chronically increased, just like in COPD, and carbon dioxide becomes the only drive for a high level of carbon dioxide becomes the only drive for uh, stimulating respirations, we should not be giving them pure oxygen because giving them pure oxygen is going to drop the carbon dioxide level. As a result, it's going to kill their drive to breathe. Okay, so that's something I wanted to throw it out there. So now that we understand the topic, let's see we can if we if we can do some questions. So in this question, a 32-year-old female with claustrophobia fear of closed spaces, obviously, is stuck in a malfunctioning elevator. She experiences severe anxiety as well as dizziness, weakness, and blurred vision. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's symptoms? So first of all, her level of uh, carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is dropping because she's hyperventilating and the level partial pressure of oxygen is increasing okay so when her carbon dioxide level partial pressure of carbon dioxide is dropping there is going to be what's going to happen to her cerebral perfusion pressure the cerebral perfusion pressure is also going to drop let's see that from that graph that we that that we are familiar with so this is the graph i was talking about see when the carbon dioxide level drops below um, below 50, the cerebral perfusion pr pressure rapidly drops. Okay, it rapidly drops. So what happens if the cerebral perfusion pressure drops? You're going to start to have neurological symptoms. And in this patient, the neurological symptoms is dizziness, weakness, and blurred vision. Drop of a uh, uh, drop of carbon dioxide in the in the CNS is going to drop the level of oxygen in the in, in the CNS. So as a result, you're going to obviously you're going to see symptoms if you don't have oxygen in your in your brain. 
So now, which of the following is the most likely cause of these patient's symptoms? Is it decreased arterial pressure, pressure, oxygen tension? No, it's not oxygen that is causing her symptoms. Decreased arterial oxygen content? No, we're, we're worried about carbon dioxide. Decreased arterial partial carbon dioxide tension? Absolutely. Decreased arterial pH? Decreasing carbon dioxide is going to increase pH, so that's not the factor we're talking about. Increased arter arterial lactate content, that's not even related to the question. So in this case, C would be the correct answer because the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide tension in the, in, the, in the brain decreased, which caused her to have all these neurologic symptoms. So next question deals with a 56-year-old heavy smoker presents to your office complaining of chronic cough and lower extremity edema. Physical exam revealed significant cyanosis and expiratory wheezes scattered throughout the lung fields. Shortly after being given supplemental oxygen through the nasal cannula, the patient's respiratory rate decreases and he becomes increasingly confused. This clinical decline is a result of decreased stimulation of which of the following. So let's remind ourselves once again what is the respiratory drive for patients who is going through um, COPD? So what happens in COPD? In COPD, since they have very poor um, ventilation, they are, carbon dioxide is always high. They're used to very, very high concentration of carbon dioxide, right? So having a high carbon dioxide does not stimulate the respiratory center anymore. But a low oxygen level in these patients stimulates the respiratory center. So for someone who's, who, who has a chronic, um, uh, chronic problem with ventilation, or chronically there, they have a high level of carbon dioxide in their body, for those patients, the main respiratory drive is not the central chemoreceptor. The main respiratory drive is actually hypoxia. So the main respiratory drive is achieved by the peripheral receptors. So imagine you give these people 100% oxygen. What's going to happen to their respiratory drive? The respiratory drive is going to be completely destroyed, and they're not going to be able to breathe. So in this case, this patient is obviously going through COPD because he has chronic cough, lower extremity edema. Physical exam revealed significant cyanosis expiratory wheezes, which is asthma, scattered throughout the lung field shortly after being given supplemental oxygen through a nasal cannula, the patient's respiratory rate decreases. Now, the clinical decline is a result of decreased stimulation of which of the following. It's going to be the decreased stimulation of the, of the peripheral receptor. So it's going to be the carotid bodies in this particular scenario. So B is the correct answer. Now, last question deals with a 65-year-old male with a long history of COPD is brought to the emergency room complaining of shortness of breath, fever, yellow sputum, and lower extremity edema. Physical exam reveals cyanosis, finger clubbing, and bilateral lung wheezes. Which of the, which of the following finding is most likely in this patient? So this patient already has COPD. They have already told us. Now, which of the following finding is most likely in this patient? Normal arterial oxygen content, arterial blood oxygen content, no. They're not going to have normal arterial blood oxygen content because the carbon dioxide is going to be high and oxygen is going to be low. Normal mixed venous blood oxygen content, no. Even the veins are not going to have normal oxygen content. Increase in pH of the arterial blood, no. If anything, it's going to be decreased. Decreased pulmonary arterial resistance, COPD has, well, COPD does cause hypoxic vasoconstriction, but uh, a COPD which is all over the lungs, well, it could be a possible answer, but it's very unlikely because um, increase in carbon dioxide or decrease in oxygen will cause uh, vasoconstriction, but that is only if they're shut shuttling the blood from one area of the lung to the other area of the lung, but COPD is kind of all over the lung. So that could be the possible answer, but it's highly unlikely. Let me see if E is a better choice. E says decrease cerebral vascular resistance. That's it.
why the vascular resistance is going to decrease because in COPD carbon dioxide level is going to be increased and if carbon dioxide level is going to be increased then there they're going to be vasodil there is going to be vasodilation in the in the brain um, so if there is vasodilation in the brain the resistance is going to drop so the correct answer in that case is going to be E decreased cerebral vascular resistance